Hey there. Welcome back to the pod. Today the Blazers are playing the Houston Rockets. And uh, normally that game wouldn't matter very much. Blazer games have not mattered in a while. But this one matters a little bit more than the last couple because the Rockets are right on the tail of the Golden State Warriors to knock them out of the play-in tournament. They're currently one game back and they've won eight in a row. And if they do knock out the Warriors, that's only going to improve the Blazers' pick that they get from the Warriors. So let's go Rockets. We are actively rooting against our Blazers right now. Even though they're putting up a pretty good effort so far, down one here in the first quarter. Riley, what do you think about the Rockets' chances of overtaking the Warriors? And... uh what do you think that, you know, how does that affect the pick? What do you see that? How do you see that playing out for the Blazers? Oh, it's happening. It's happening. Whoa. I think gold, I think golden state is kind of weak right now. I think that they don't have a whole lot to play for right now. Um, they know that this isn't their year. They know that just floundering their way into the play-in isn't going to be enough um you know and so I don't think that they really have as much to fight for as a team that's on the come up like Houston uh and you know looking at Golden State's upcoming schedule it's against a lot of good teams they have to play Minnesota they have to play Dallas twice three times they have to play Dallas that could be pretty tough for for Golden State as they try to stay in the, the hunt um yeah at the same time it could just about knock dallas out of contention so you know the west is still a tight race but i just don't see golden state being the team that slips in um and that's good news if you're a blazers fan because we want to see them fall uh at this point i i think enough teams have bad enough records that they really can't have their pick protected is that right colton uh well if they if the warriors leap into the top four yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, it's not, it's not going to be ping pong balls get crazy. Yeah, yeah. They're it's they're in the fun. exact right spot where yeah. that is very unlikely, yeah, even as a lottery pick, basically. So we need them to lose lose out the season. That would be just fine. Yeah, I don't. You know, I think if they could go, they have twelve games left, like three and nine. That would put us in a great spot to get a, an excellent pick. Um, which the Blazers desperately, desperately need, as evidenced by the fact that we're struggling against the Rockets right now. Well, I mean, Kirby said the Rockets are playing good ball. Uh, I want to just say the Rockets of a couple years ago were a dumpster fire. They were a dumpster fire. They sucked for a couple years. They got some good picks. They hit in the middle of the first round. They got Shangun. But then they also, you know, took Jabari Smith, Jalen Green. The G League Ignite prospect is now starting to show what he's made of in this stretch. He's been lights out. And they signed some veterans that have helped them out as well. They drafted some wings. What are you saying, Colton? Interesting parallels between the Blazers, the current, the present here. Just because, you know, the Blazers drafted a, a highly touted G League Ignite guard. They're looking to take that step where they draft those wings and they have a mid first coming up, right? So it'll be interesting to see if the Blazers can replicate that kind of success. And then maybe a year or two when they sign those free agents, because they're going to have cap space with all these young guys, we could be similar seeing a similar rise, right? So I love, I love it. I, I I'm excited for the Rockets uh, just for their future, but also pick watch, pick watch 2024. It's been one of the things I've been excited about this season for the Blazers. I want to give a shout out and I mean, okay, it's a little early to do this. I'm probably jinxing it. You don't often trade probably your best player in franchise history or a top two or three player in franchise history to a contender where they have a legit shot at a title and get a lottery pick for that transaction. Usually when you trade your best player to a contender, what do you get? You get mid first round picks, late first round picks, salary, if this works out, this is a major win for Joe Cronin. If 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 you get a lottery pick, trading away your superstar to a contender where they you know they can win, that's a that's a double win. If you if your if your superstar wants out like Dame did, the Miami Heat 
I don't know. Would their pick be a lottery pick? Maybe they're they're sitting around the eight seed right now, but you never can count them out as the eight seed. Look at last year. So it took it was kind of an interesting route acquiring Drew Holiday and then getting to this point. But I hope against hope against hope we see the Warriors get sent home. I, I'm tired of them. I've said it before. You can call me a hater all you want, but you know, after a decade of success and being a juggernaut. It's time to see some other teams step into the limelight. And my my favorite quote, I'll just summarize the arrogance and the cockiness and what I hate about Golden State with everybody's favorite, Draymond Green. We're not worried about the Rockets. We don't or we don't care about the Rockets. Uh you're you're a game away from them, dude. Wake up. So you should care. If you ever look at the standings, you'd see they're literally right there with you they're as good as you are so i don't know why you're not worried about that when you're about to get knocked out of the play in not even the playoff the play in wake up draymond green <laughs> well you kind of said it colton you were hoping against hope and i think that that it's it's going to be really a tough road for the uh rockets i feel like the I think that uh, the Warriors do have something to play for, as you mentioned, Riley. Um, Steph, Steph and those guys, they have their pride. And I think they'll turn it on here at the end of the season, right when they need to. And I think they'll just squeak into the play-in. And they could eventually even make the playoffs, too. I just think they have that experience and that the the talent. And Steph, obviously, game-breaker. They proved it last year. They weren't able to get past the Lakers, but they did knock out your favorites, Colton, the Sacramento Kings, in that first round, even though every game was a barn burner of a game and we were rooting for them the whole way. They just couldn't overcome Steph. He was putting up 50-point triple-doubles in that series, and uh, I think he'll come on here to end the season and dash our hopes, but still, it could it could still end up being a decent pick even if it doesn't get into the lottery it could be a mid first round pick i mean it'll probably be in the what 15 to 20 range somewhere in there yeah um and like you said shangun was a you know middle uh first round pick that they hit on so it's gonna matter more i feel like uh as it usually does in the nba draft not necessarily where the pick lands but the the, the luck and the scouting and the you know the foresight to be able to pick the right guy in that spot I didn't realize Shane Goon has uh, been hurt he turned his ankle like two weeks ago and he's supposed to miss the rest of the regular season so the Rockets are doing this without you know one of their studs um, but like you Colton said the their G League Ignite prospect has really turned it on um, Jalen Green Hopefully we see some of that from the Blazers coming up. I did like your comparison of the Rockets to the Blazers. It's a nice roadmap of hope for the for the Blazers in the coming seasons. Maybe, maybe they can figure out a way to be fighting for play in position in the next two years. That's what we that's what we can hope for. Shout that our Jock, Jock Landau right now has 15 of their 26 points on five of five shooting and two of two from three. So he's uh, carrying our hopes and dreams on his shoulders right now. Do up, breathe. He's trying his best, but he's undersized. Do up, do up, do up, do up, do up, do up, do up. Do up. So, uh, so if that pick does, does anybody have any like, any names in that sort of uh, mid first round that they would oh. like to see the Blazers target? Well, if worse comes to worse too, you can trade that pick. If you only want to add one more rookie to your stable of rookies, you make sure you draft a guy tall, six, eight or taller. Right. But if you don't see any other names that pop out at you, you can swing that pick and it's valuable because people want, you know, cheap talent. Uh, there's a couple of big guys. A lot of the mock drafts are so varying this season. It's kind of hard to get a consensus of where everyone's at. Um, there's a couple of bigs that, you know, one of them reminds me of Walker Kessler, which is, you know, uh, Donovan Klingon. He's the guy that kind of the anchor for UConn. I just recently saw him in a mock draft in the top five. 
Whereas recently he's been like 20. So you don't know who's going to be there at this point because it's just such a volatile draft. But if if you the Blazers step up to the bat this year with two picks and they don't trade them, I want them to use both those picks on players six eight or taller. That is my main point. Maybe six seven or taller. How about that? I'll give them one inch on that side of things. Is he but, white? Is that why he reminds you of Walker Kessler? No, it's I mean, that is it's not a part of it. His game is like Walker Kessler, maybe even a better player. He's like kind of that shot blocker, like dominant shot. So blocker. he's not white. He is, but okay. that's not why I compared him that route, right? Curious. Curious. Uh, he his game reminds me of it for sure. I could see a situation where between the Blazers pick, which should be pretty good, the Golden State pick, which I'm predicting is going to be pretty good. Um, and you know, maybe we, tr- it's, we've talked about this a lot and this is a whole other conversation, but if we trade one of our guys like Anthony, uh, for a pick for like a first round pick, I'd be okay with maybe combining a couple of those to try to move up as well. Um, whether it's this draft or the next draft, uh, yeah. if, if we, if next we have draft. three, if we have three first round picks, the idea of picking someone this year and maybe trying to get the other two for a higher up pick next year. I'd be open to that idea. Um, the We've talked a lot about how the draft isn't super strong this year. Although I don't know how much that really means, honestly. It's, you just, I mean, there have been drafts in the past that were supposed to be really strong drafts where they were all busts. And similarly, there have been guys who were complete no names that nobody knew about who have turned out to be really good NBA but, players. But with that, still high picks aren't super valuable because, you know. It's perceived as weaker. Yeah, and like you don't know who to select when you have a higher pick because there's no obvious guy that stands out. So like having three picks in this sort of draft would probably be more valuable than having one or two higher picks maybe because you'd have more chances to hit. It's like your odds of of, uh, uncovering a gym go up potentially. Right, but still, if we could get one decent pick out of this year and – be able to get another higher pick, whether it's this year or next year. I don't know that I really care, but if the argument is that the draft is weak this year, then fine, make it next year. But the idea of combining picks to try to get some real help for Scoot and Shaden, I think would be potentially worth it. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of, I don't necessarily, if I agree with that, I think I would rather have more, more picks than like combining to go higher. I mean, I don't know. It's, if there's someone that they really want, I guess it just comes down to situation. You know, if there's some guy that they are sure is going to be a hit and uh, they got their draft guy, what's his name, Colton? Mike Schmitz. Mike Schmitz. If he's just saying in Cronin's ear saying, this is your guy, he's going to be the guy, then maybe take that swing. But I sort of like the idea of having more chances, especially when you don't know. Just make the players six, eight or, or taller. Yeah. Agreed. Please just take. We can all agree on that. Guys. The forwards are what run the world most of the time in the NBA. Always has been well bigger players than than small guards. I Especially. love small guards. Blazer fans all love small guards. <laughs> yeah. Please balance the roster unless there's a transcendent guard that falls from the heavens. But guess what? You heard this first, people. Colton wants Rob Dillingham, another player. We want the three-guard lineup. Six, seven or higher. I prefer six, eight or higher. The taller and more skilled, the better. No, I Yeah, especially because we already have two really talented guards. We cannot take more small players. We We have to take size. Do we? I think so. (laughs) I'm hopeful. All right. Let us know down in the comments below where you think are the Warriors going to make the playoffs? The Rockets going to overtake them? Where's that pick going to end up for the Portland Trailblazers? And who should they be looking at in the draft? Thanks for watching. See you next time. Six, seven or bigger.